Joined as always by my friends, swinging from trees, vine to vine. Uh, I think coming back to us from the maybe not so frigid north, Allison, and maybe frigid west, Chris. It's pretty. Two frigid. folks you can find on uh, on the internet. The easiest place to find them is go to binaryjazz.us and see the things they're linked to. Other stuff on the internet mostly. Uh, we talk about stuff here. Sometimes we know what we're talking about, but generally we don't. That's kind of the gig. Glad you could join us today and every day. <laughs> you can join us every day, actually, in Slack. We're, we Slack every day. Yeah, sadly, so, I, it it, appear, it it generally appears that our Slack is quieter than it, than it actually is because most of our conversation happens in the private channel. But if you showed up and said oh. hi, we wouldn't. Uh, we wouldn't. Uh, we totally hang and chat with you. I um, yeah. I, how many how many Slack teams are you members of? Uh, I can't check. I just killed Slash. Should I include uh, the ones that I have deliberately turned off and disabled um, because I don't actively go into those channels very often? Let's just say act like active Slacks that you like, uh, like your command key. You can go command one through nine and then, okay. and then your host. So how many do you have in that? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. I mean, there's two more that I have turned on, but I don't look at very often. I mean, one of those six I don't look at very often either. Yeah. I have six as well, plus one that's kind of a, a floater that I check in on occasionally. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I have nine, but one is with WordPress core, right? So, like, yeah. I'm only in the announcements channel for releases because I don't hear about them in 17 other ways. I don't know why that one. <laughs> I should just dump that. It's a really... I really, I, I set it up like figuring like, well, I can spare the RAM and maybe someone that I know, that'll be like the easiest way for them to get in contact with me. But in reality, like, I guess if I don't reply to them, they'll find another way to get in contact with me. So actually, let's start up Slack and get rid of WordPress Slack. <laughs> Thank I you have, for helping me with the spring gotten, cleaning. I have gotten, uh, I have gotten people uh, found me on WordPress Slack that didn't find me otherwise. So that's... But also being a, a WordCamp organizer, that's kind of a, a necessity. Even if I'm not actively organizing, um, it's still helpful to have that a, around. I have one that does nothing but um, serve as an endpoint for bots, for <laughs> work-related bot, bots. Yeah, like there's me and two of the people in there and we never talk to each other, we only talk to the bots. So that's <laughs> kind of like a dystopia that I really like. <laughs> It's just weird. It's a dystopia. And usually it's like us like cursing at the box, like, why aren't you doing what I expected you to do? Well, that's, um, what that's what you do with bots. Yeah. That's what they're built for, abuse. I'm, I'm dumping another one too for a, uh, like a web dev community that I'm not really involved in. I thought that it would be better than it was. It's good to do some spring cleaning once in a while. Yeah, and obviously doing it on the podcast is the preferred place to do it, right? Yeah, so, exactly. A public, a public dashing well yeah, i'm gonna be, myself for all these, uh, these slack i'll be staying in my family slack channel so that'll be a thing that i'll i, I won't spring clean it's <laughs> a good one i like it it's uh we've got a little family tree one we've got a, we've got a food one in, in true tar family fashion where we post various food photos <laughs> it works out what's do you have a post twitter strategy Yet? A post you mean after Twitter dies? Yes. I haven't planned for that day. <laughs> yeah, I haven't planned for that day. I don't... Good, I, mean, I feel good. I have also not planned for that day, but it feels a lot more imminent than it has ever before, and I wasn't sure if I needed to start thinking. About if it. Twitter shut down, I don't know that I would do anything different. Um, I would lose contact with a few people. Yeah. But, but like, would it matter? But those... A lot of those people I follow on like Instagram, 
Um, I don't know what Instagram is. <laughs> I, don't know what Instagram is. I just don't Instagram. I mean, that's like, that would require like using the camera on my phone and who knows where that is. Yeah, happens. well, and, and I mean, so Instagram I use pretty much when we go places and I take pictures yeah. of the places that we go most, mostly because it makes people jealous. Um, that's like 99% of what the reason why I look at Instagram or use Instagram and I don't use it very frequently otherwise. Um, and I use Twitter probably less than I use Instagram. I feed Instagram to Twitter, but the amount of times that I actually like log in and look at Twitter, um, is, is very, very rare. Sometimes I do it on my phone, but I don't, I generally don't tweet from my phone. Oh, I don't I think it's the only place I can tweet from because I don't think I know my password anymore. So I'm logged in from my phone. So I'd have to reset the password to log in elsewhere. Um, well, I got big on like one password, right? And super long, like, oh, of course 168 characters seems reasonable, right? And somehow, I at some point before I, I guess my last phone, I couldn't get one password to work. So I literally had to type in this massive password to get into Twitter. But then I had to change it on my phone because I fouled it up. But even then, I just was like, I'm going to type a bunch of stuff in Notepad and copy it and paste it, right? But I didn't update one password. So now I have the old 168 character pa- or maybe not 168, but it's, it's unreasonably long. Like, who cares? <laughs> it's Twitter. Like, what, you know? It's so dumb. I don't know why Twitter is more secure than my bank, but fine. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I found that I moved Twitter off of my home screen of my phone. I, I shoved it in a folder. And... I'm like, I don't read Twitter as much. And my usage is like falling off a cliff. And I blame my ad blocking uh, DNS, actually. Once the ads were gone on Twitter, you know, I stopped <laughs> using Twitter, maybe. I don't think that's true. But I just stopped using Twitter. I, I mean, I still use it. But I, I'm not ready to say like I've given up on Twitter. But I'm not there like I was. You have an ad blocking DNS? Yeah. Uh, I think it's called AdGuard. Uh, they sell an app, but they also have just a public DNS that you can send through. And it is amazing for battery life on your cell phone if you're using any apps that are subsidized by advertisements because they don't load. Um, and it also is problematic if I'm working on a site that, you know, I have to do something with ads because, well, the no. ad service doesn't load. Yeah. yeah. And a lot of places are like, pop up like the, Hey, whitelist us. And I'm like, I, I actually can't. <laughs> like, <laughs> DNS took care of this. So. You're like, this isn't on me. Well, it's kind of on me, but not, not in the way that you think. <laughs> Pretty excited about um, uh, the rumors of Apple launching like a subscription service for like multiple like news websites. Right, so I can play mm-hmm. Apple and then have access to New York Times and Washington Post and whatnot. Oh. I, I won't know. use it as often as I don't use it now, but I'll feel better about not using it, and certainly better about having an ad blocking DNS because I'm paying some media company to do something. And it'll cover all the basis of what you don't read. Yeah, are they gonna? Is that gonna be like a something combined with Apple News? Uh, I think it's, yeah, yeah, it seems to be, yeah, it seems to be like a part of it, yeah, Um, which also Apple News, I, I don't, I don't really understand, every once in a while I get a notification from Apple News on my phone or my watch, but I'm not really sure how to change settings on there, or like what, why it determines some things are newsworthy and some aren't, yeah, some things have happened that, like if Apple knew me, like this is something (laughs) I would be interested in, but, I, I, yeah, I, I've I've seen that. I, so I I kill all notifications for everything by default. Uh, so I don't see that on my computer or laptop or phone. But I have seen it pop up randomly on Erin's laptop, and I've looked at her settings. I'm like, what is that? Like, where is that even coming from? I have no idea because I've I've looked for those settings, and yeah, I have no idea what what I mean. I mean, I guess if you just turn off all banner ads from from Apple News, then you just won't get them. Um, so somewhat related, like I want I want Apple to be smart enough to tell me about things that I'm interested in without being annoying. Yeah. Right? Like this doesn't seem like that big of a task. Just do that, right? Just be like totally aware of my mood all the time, and don't bother me when I'm in a salty mood. Come on, Apple. Um, 
somewhat related, we got a Google Home Mini. Uh-huh. Uh, just like the tiny speaker thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I installed it, and it's like, we need to access, you know, like all these different histories that Google keeps on you. Well, I turned all those off. So Google doesn't have like my, well, I'm sure they have my browsing history, but they claim they don't. My location history. I don't have any Google stuff on my phone. So I, I mean, maybe they have my location history. I'm not sure how. Oh, I have Gmail. Yeah, they have my location history too, probably. Um, but like I have all that disabled, right? So Google Home Mini is pretty much like totally <laughs> ignorant of anything useful. If you, you can have it tell you a joke. You can have it tell you the weather because it knows where it's located. Uh, you can have it, you can search for like general information and that's about it. Yeah. I, have, I don't like, want to link my calendar to it or anything like that. Have right. it, like add and delete stuff from my calendar. I, you know? I, I got it. I got it when uh, Google was giving them away with Spotify premium and I already had Spotify premium. So I just filled out a thing and so I'll get a free thing. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, it was sitting in the front room with our TV for a while and wasn't being used. And I set up a couple things on, on if this, then that. Uh, to go with it like I could use it to control the nest and whatever um, I haven't used it for that and and yeah and then I moved it into the office because I figured well you know it's less creepy for it to be recording all of our public conversations in the front room so at least maybe it can be somewhat less creepy to just record my conversations because I and I'm probably the one that's most likely to use it so I'll just have it right here but yeah I mean it doesn't hey Google um, tell me a joke Sorry, I can't help with that yet. <laughs> and, that's, and that's what it does. So uh, we had. It doesn't even want to tell you. It doesn't even want to tell me a joke. Alexa had like this thing that was a magnet that was like a wand, right? I don't know what it was. And it like I had a barcode scanner. And I, I, it, was, it was the same thing. It was a freebie for you bought something on Amazon and they gave you. Oh, no, I think you bought it for $10 and they gave you $10 credit on Amazon. I'm like, okay, what the hell? I'll try it. So my kids loved it for getting the weather and getting jokes and then we started hearing the same jokes over and over again and then it just became like a magnet on the fridge and did nothing else and then i replaced my router and it couldn't reconnect so anytime you push the button it would just like sorry i can't help you so i literally like when the google home mini was set up i just took it off the fridge and threw it in the trash like i i don't i can't make it connect again like it's even doing using like the app i this technology thing is hard who knew the internet would be so difficult i mean like healthcare tough pales compared to the internet this shit is complicated y'all i'd be tempted to attach all these things to like a roomba so at least it like moves around and like <laughs> keeps you keeps you company in like a little cute robot way i don't know <laughs> hey google yeah. what's the weather right now in salt lake city it's 31 and mostly cloudy Ooh. today it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 39 and a low of 22 okay that's, but that's the first time I've ever done that ever. <laughs> so my kids like that in the morning. Like, what should I wear today? I don't know. Ask Google. Like, that's cool. It used to be <laughs> Ask Alexa, and then Alexa, Alexa. I think Alexa. What's Amazon's thing? Is that Alexa? Yeah, Alexa. Yeah. So then, then Alexa just stopped telling us things. So maybe Google. I, I wonder. Don't know. We'll see. I wonder. Hey Google, what should I wear today? Here's some information for what should you wear. On the website gotoquiz.com, they say, what pants would you rather be wearing? Leggings, shorts, jeans, leather, dress pants. This is exactly what I'm talking about. The internet is terrible. This is dumb. This is so ridiculous. These are the leggings that you should wear today. <laughs> <laughs> when I did a Google search for what should I wear today, oh, I love it. But this this is Google. What what are they like the fifth or sixth? Like oh maybe more than that because they're two stocks now, right? I don't know. Like highest market cap in the world, and this is the kind of stuff we get out of like that huge corporation. That's the quality we can pull out. It it's laughable. Like this is this is what that's as an investor. Like, I would I would argue that that typing a search into a Google search engine would result in a better answer than that. But let's actually find that out so I can test that theory. What should I wear today? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, it, it, it comes up, that's the, that's the thing. 
Uh, so you know how Google has um, their sort of recommended answer that they push the top and it, or like if you search for a recipe or, or a thing yeah. that brings up things to the top and it, it formats it different. So yeah, that's actually what it, what it comes up with. What should you wear? And then it says, what pants would you rather be wearing? Leggings, shorts, jeans, leather, dress pants, other. And that's from a quiz. Uh -huh. Go to quiz.com. What should you wear today? <laughs> so here's, here's my question. Like, is this terribleness like pushing us? Like, maybe this terribleness is a good thing in the sense that like it will push us back to. To like, actually making decisions about what we should wear today. <laughs> yeah. And like, maybe like we'll start telling each other like, hey, here's a cool way to figure out what to wear today. Like, I mean, the fuck outside. Like, then I, maybe that's what you could do, right? Well, okay, but so I, that's if a bad Google example. Told me, if Google thing, told me to get the fuck outside, that would be fair. Although, if it's freezing <laughs> like it is now, I would probably not think it's fair. <laughs> and put on a jacket when you do it, young man. <laughs> However, um, I Google knows like my location and yeah. it knows my search and like browsing history, so probably it knows what clothes I wear or pretty. So it could probably make a pretty good assumption. Um, it's really cold outside. And you have set the thermo thermostat to 67 degrees, so you're probably going to want to wear a sweatshirt inside, and then probably pants of some kind. <laughs> which, which should I wear today? Like, it might say, it's a bit chilly out, grab a jacket. That's a reasonable response. Right, yeah. And, the dat and you're absolutely right, well, the, the data vectors are there. Why does this not work? This is so Whoa. dumb. I mean, I, I'm going to go unplug mine and throw it away. <laughs> oh, look, a show giveaway. You want to Google Home Mini? Ping me on, I don't know, not Twitter, clearly. I don't, I, I don't know. I find me somewhere, not in the Word, WordPress Slack either. Is, is Twitter's demise coming from a particular news article that I have yet to find? Or is this just no, like I'm just really the impending doom of all social media? Yeah. I, I'd see. Uh, yeah, uh, we can all hope. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm just pe maybe I'm maybe I'm just very pessimistic at the moment about humanity. <laughs> we need we need to get some people on Mars in a hurry to change my attitude. Like what what are we waiting for? Let's go. I, I think I think really the the thing that's uh, holding Twitter up is the fact that it's not uh, owned any money owned and run <laughs> by somebody whose last name is Twitter. <laughs> that's true. That's right. If Jack Twitter got a hold of the place, then that then it would be fine. And use daddy it'd be bankrolled by daddy's uh money and good old jack twit <laughs> there's a so i i i caught up on the last episode of of um uh last week tonight uh last night and there's a whole bit that john oliver does at the beginning about donald trump and about how he's horrible but also the things he says and does are genuinely funny um like and you feel horrible about yourself for being entertained by him because he is a horrible person and yet you can't help yourself by being entertained and that is that is literally how i feel about things so like you were asking a while ago about like you were asking a while ago about about does do these things just make you angry or do they or are you able to laugh and i think that that's 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 where i stand on that spectrum um, is is that is is what he uh, shared on that? I'll I'll it'll be in the show notes. If I um, so Dogfish Head Brewery is a brewery somewhere. Mm, I think in the southeast. I don't know. They make beer, and they recently really a brewery a makes beer. Yep. Uh, yeah, and they're known for it too. Their beer. Um, <laughs> and they they released a beer recently, a pale ale that was. Uh, I don't really know how, but it's like a Grateful Dead pale ale, right? And so I was like, well, I should try that. So I bought a six pack of it. And the bottle caps are just normal dogfish head bottle caps, nothing fancy. Tyler collects bottle caps now, apparently. So he saw it in the fridge in the garage and was like, are you going to have a beer with breakfast? I want one of those bottle caps. And I said, no. And then he asked, I was going to have with lunch and dinner. I said, I might have one after dinner. After you go to bed, I might have one, you know? Um, <laughs> and if I do, I'll leave you the bottle cap. Fair? He's like, sure. But then at lunch, he's like, are you sure you don't want a beer with lunch? If he were to ask me today, it would be a different answer. Like, hell yeah, buddy. Hell yeah. I love the scheduling of this. Like, well, it's breakfast time. Are you going <laughs> to? He just figured I needed something to drink. Maybe yeah. I'll grab a beer. 
Um, and the, the focus on the like, and I need that bottle cap. Like, I'm, <laughs> yeah. time is of the essence here, people. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, I mean, that, if you had kids, <laughs> that's pretty par for the course. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> when? But when can that happen? Now? Is it now? Is it right now? Oh, in five minutes? Okay, so if I set my timer to five minutes, they don't yes. set timers. They are very Can you little. remind me in five Google minutes? Google has timers. That's the best thing it has. And so with the timer, you can ask it how much time is left. There is value right there in the stupid thing. There you go. Yeah. That would be helpful if you needed, also if you need multiple timers, if you're like cooking a bunch oh. of stuff. Oh. Well, you know where you need timers is kids and an Xbox, so they take turns. Oh. You can play for 15 minutes and your sister can play for 15 minutes and then we're turning that damn thing off. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like my, my niece is obsessed with, uh, like she really likes Christmas trees. And so my brother was trying to explain to her that, well, you can't have another Christmas tree now. You have to wait nine months. And I was like, she doesn't understand nine months. Like, that's not a thing. Yeah. We have a little one we leave up all year round. That's, that's, I was like, that's the strategy. You just have a... Yeah then decorate it when Christmas rolls around? I don't know. I like, it's, nice. It gets decorated throughout the year. Like ornaments kind of change a little, maybe seasonally, maybe not. It's well, St. Patty's. I mean, like you can tell in this screen <laughs> to reach beyond both edges of it. That's why you need the bottle caps, the St. Patrick's Day tree. <laughs> oh, that's a good, yeah. <laughs> it blitzed after the show to decorate the Christmas tree. <laughs> why are you passed on the living room floor? Just like St. Patty's horses. tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's much. Man. Um, do you think it's possible? Uh, this is topical because um, 2018, my partner got rid of all Facebook related services. Mm -hmm. and 2019 is about getting rid of Google related services. Oh. Do you think it's possible or do you think it's absolutely. possible to minimize? No, no, it's absolutely possible. I, right? read, I read an article. I read an article. Life Hacker, right? Pay maybe. Uh, about about getting rid of Google services and yes, it is possible, but it makes the internet horrible. It comes at a cost. Well, especially, as we've covered. especially <laughs> if if you go all out and you're actively blocking Google. Yeah, that's what I. Think. Which is which is what they did because they're like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna make a hard stop. We're gonna cut. We're not gonna use Gmail. We're not gonna use Google Search. We're not gonna do it. But also all the tangential things that Google does that you're not even aware of. We're gonna just block those servers, and yeah, it basically it basically breaks the internet. Yeah. yeah. So that's... I went to Firefox with DuckDuckGo as my default browser. I mean my default search engine, and I dropped in Privacy Badger, which is an EFS EFF thing to like basically eliminate tracking and what else do I have in there? Um, uBlock origin and there's one other one that like obviously modifies the DOM because why not live dangerously? And there are <laughs> sites that I can't use. Um, and I'm like, 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 like sites that I need to use and, um, and I can't, and I'm like, well, okay, I don't need that service, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, I, I couldn't use it because um, we use Gmail for email. So, and yeah. I use Gmail for email for myself. So, I mean, I could switch all my stuff to something else if I really wanted to host mail myself, but I yeah. don't. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, I just, I just, I don't. We were actually, uh, Aaron and I were having a conversation about 23andMe last night because um, uh, she, uh, a friend of hers had done it and it was really interesting and whatever and it was cool. And so we were talking about it. And I read a whole bunch of stuff uh, about it after, after, well, sort of during and after a conversation when we, when we were reading to the uh, kids. And, and um, so, yeah, they, they sell your, your DNA data to research companies. Um, and 80% of their DNA, collected DNA data is, is being sold to research companies. You can't opt out. Um, or you never opt in, but most people don't read, and so they are opted in, and then they get pissed off when they find out that their data is being sold to research companies and pharmaceuticals, um, which is which is fun. Um, also, uh, there 
they don't really care much about like what you do with the information. So if you get like uh, all this DNA data that may or may not be 100% accurate about like your uh, genetic tendency toward particular life threatening diseases and like end of life ailments and stuff, um, they don't really care what you do with that information. Like if it makes you like miserable for the rest of your life or like commit suicide, like, yeah, whatever, like you're, you're okay. Which, you know, I mean, I don't expect them to either. And I, I like looking at like the types of things that, that you could get reports on. Like, I don't know that I want to know all that information about myself. What? So I think we're generally in agreement that the late 20 teens suck. What would be a better time to live? Allison, I hope you brought a topic today that we can look at in two weeks. <laughs> 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 this is the salty, the salty, uh, privacy isn't working for you. <laughs> I get, yeah, I guess the topic today is the internet is better garbage. time to live. Um, yeah. I'm still waiting for my flying car. Uh, yeah. I'm still waiting for my actual hoverboard. Um, I'm, I'm flying. I'm done with. Not that I'm like, not that I'd be able to ride a hoverboard at all. I would, I would totally like I, that first scene in, in Back to the Future too, where he like stands on it and flips up in the air and it goes flying. Like that would totally be me. That's me as well. But yeah. I would want to carry it around under the guise that I knew what I was doing. I, I don't have my my self uh, my self uh, locking shoes uh, where you you put your foot in, you push a button, and it goes. Like that doesn't, that's not exist. So, I mean, those things I, I expected to get when I, you know, when I was a, a youth uh, growing up, those are the visions of the future that I expected. I'm still waiting for that. I'm also waiting for my like uh, sports almanac from the future <laughs> that I can use to make millions, make my empire. Um, yeah. If I well, had, even like externalizing I yourself. Dollars, I would pay someone to appear to you randomly during your day and hand sports <laughs> almanac. That would be that would be the, the best gift I think I could could muster if I just had just extra funds <laughs> to have a stranger approach you at the supermarket and just be like, Chris, this time is of the essence. Actually I'll just hire Christopher Lloyd to do it. Yeah. That's while that's I'm, fair. Yeah. While I'm daydreaming. I mean, if you if you did that, then that would be pretty phenomenal, and it wouldn't <laughs> even matter if, if if I lost all my money actually trying to make <laughs> make a fortune off off of betting against future uh, results. <laughs> I don't know if your family would agree. <laughs> They're like, he's he seems fine with losing all the money, but we're we're not we're not we're not good with this. I would ex I would expect it to be you know fair exchange for Christopher Lloyd handing me the sports almanac from the future. I mean. True. You're like it makes for a hell of a story. <laughs> That's all that matters. Oh. I mean, I think I think all times suck is the, is the my answer to your question, original question of what would be a better time to live. I think all times suck in one way or another. Um, I think that we're we're focused on the sucking uh, in particular now because the not just. United States, but sort of global political climate is leaning very towards extremist right things um, and yeah, hatred I think and xenophobia and and whatnot. And I think that that's particularly horrible. But I think that those things have always existed in the past, and maybe we're just looking at them in a different way because we have the access and resources to see them more than we used to. Do you think that? So hidden closer to home, do you think that that is, this is like a dumb question. I know the answer to, but I think I want to discuss it further. Um, do you think that the internet has helped that? Like give a voice yes. to people that have previously absolutely. been ignored. Yeah, so absolutely. That, so as much as the internet sucks and as much as companies like Facebook and Google and not Twitter because they're not profitable um, and, and whatnot are, are profiting from like every aspect of our lives that they can get their meaty fingers into. Um, despite all that, it's a, it's a greater value to humanity than it is a mosquito. Um, well, I think it has the power to create, like, it has the power to create communities that wouldn't exist otherwise. Mm -hmm. So, like, I have the ability to connect with people who are like-minded in ways that I wouldn't be able to track down otherwise. Yeah. Or, um, 
I mean, in so many different directions, whether it's for activism or just like, hey, I like this thing. Do other people like this thing? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Whether it's like music or something more extracurricular. Or, I don't know. Sure. And that's and that's part of I mean, that's that's both the benefit and the the whatever the opposite of benefit is. Um, is that it, it's able to do that so easily because like those same tools used to find communities of like-minded individuals are the tools that like extremists use and terrorists use and you know like so really we've just made humanity Nazi dudes in, in in West Virginia use yeah mm -hmm. so effectively we've just made humanity do all the things it does just faster yeah with less friction yeah. well that sucks that means humanity sucks right I don't know. Like we have a great new tool and we just going to abuse the hell out of it and, and like hurt other people. Right. Like that's ultimately like what mostly what the internet is. I don't know that I would say that humanity sucks. I think that there is an outsize impact of particular players in, in any sort of social group. There is, there are particular players that have an outsized impact on the whole and that makes it, feel like humanity sucks but humanity on the whole does not suck it's just yeah and i guess i should i guess i should qualify like that's not my worldview i don't believe humanity sucks i believe like generally people are good uh ultimately but it's 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 hard to believe that sometimes i guess well, and because some people will see hammer like a hammer as a tool and some people will see it as a weapon and i think the people who see it as a tool have to keep teaching other people to see it as a tool rather than a weapon, if that makes sense. I don't know. That does make a lot of sense. It's a weird comparison, but <laughs> you get, you get the no, I don't. I don't think it is, though. I don't <laughs> think it is. I think it's pretty accurate. Like you, you, it's what you what you use it for. Yeah. Well, it's just like you have to kind of keep keep spreading the word. That sounds much more about <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm fine with that kumbaya mentality. I just I don't know. I. I mean, look, I'm the saltiest of the salty here, but. <laughs> I didn't know I was going to bring so much negativity. I hope you all don't like leave this like down and down for the day. So. No, it's. Let's, let's finish with some silly questions or something and bring this silly up. Silly questions. We've, we've got, we've got some silly questions. Uh, this one will be quick. Uh, what's the weirdest thing you've bought on Craigslist slash KGG? Oh, I was, what is, I don't know if you know what Kijiji is, but it's basically a Craigslist thing. I don't. Okay. <laughs> um, and I don't know that I've actually bought anything on Craigslist ever. Um, I have bought things on Facebook Marketplace, which <laughs> kind of sort of applies. <laughs> um, Five 55-gallon drums that were empty. That's what you, the weirdest thing? Yeah. What did you put yeah. in them? Rain. <laughs> Slowly. <laughs> for for gardening or for yeah. yeah. I figured I would collect the rainwater was coming off the house and slowly water the backyard. And I hooked up like um a bib to it to like turn on the hose and stuff. And it was a great idea in theory and in practicality it was just <laughs> wow. they got like all like nasty in the bottom, so like the 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 faucet itself got gummed up and didn't actually work after like six months. And then it was like, oh, well, here's a spot mosquitoes can breed, like standing yep. water in Florida. <laughs> so there was a lot of thought that should have gone into it that didn't. So I just, I, I think I, I don't know what, how I got rid of them. I may have resold them or may have posted them and said they're free. <laughs> I think I just said they were free and someone picked them up. I think I paid 20 bucks a pop or something. So you pass them off to the next person who was like, I have this great idea. I need these. I told them the pitfalls that I ran into and said, you know, if you're going to use it for that, if you're using it for anything else, you probably know what you're doing. I sure didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I've i gotten rid of stuff on Craigslist. Uh, I, I offloaded a, uh, an old, old, old MacBook. Um, actually, maybe it was, maybe it predated MacBook. Maybe it was... Uh, 25%. How is that possible? It's I don't I don't even I don't even remember what what existed before MacBooks existed, but it might have been that. Um and and it had a PowerBooks and iBooks. Yeah, maybe it was an iBook. Or yeah, it could have been either. I don't know. Anyway, uh it was it was Aaron's grandmother's 
before she got her newer one before she passed away and so we just inherited it and it was um it had a bad hard drive you could hear it like um and so like oh well, i'll change the hard drive um because how hard can that be because i've changed computer hardware before and literally that is the thing that has made me like never open up a laptop since <laughs> um, because I opened it, I, I, I bought a hard drive and I opened it up and I'm like, Ugh. Yeah, and, no and then I couldn't put it back together again. Like I legitimately couldn't put it back together again. And, um, and yeah, I offloaded it on Craigslist as an, as is like, this has a broken hard drive and I can't put it back together. You can just have it. If you come over here, pick it up, you can have it. Here's my dumbest computer story. Um, it was an iBook and, um, the when it got hot the video processor chip like would warp and pull off from the board and then the screen would turn off and eventually the system would would fatal and reboot but it would you had to wait for it to cool down before you could actually see anything again <laughs> um so at first i opened it up and i guess i read this on a forum that that's this was the case and i thought well all i need to do is put pressure on to keep it in position so i did i initially put like a rubber foot thing you'd use to like put underneath something on your shelf on top of the chip itself against the wrist guard i had to get a longer screw to screw it back together but that helped for for months and months and months when that stopped working then it became a desktop only computer and i used a clamp and clamped the computer physically to the desk right over that chip where the rubber foot was uh, and that worked for till the computer was too slow to use anymore and then i'm like i can't like give this to anyone or sell this in this case like this is fine all you need to do is clamp it to your desk right it'll be fine so <laughs> That might have been one of the only computers that didn't get retasked that I've ever owned. Uh, that was the, a fun one. The, the double clamp. That's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was in those days. I also had a Windows uh, NT server under the desk that had two power supplies. One was internal, and one was on the outside. And it was an old AT power supply because I had more hard drives in it than I had ports uh -huh. on the original power supply. So you had to fire up the, the the first. Uh, power supply first before you turn on the actual power supply that turned on the hard drives with the operating system and whatnot so that the first drives were spinning so the system would see them <laughs> so dumb i half expect you to include something work and then you hand crank and <laughs> <laughs> you had to flick the os drive to get it spinning before it would engage but yeah it was fine otherwise like totally just fine right? totally usable so that's totally that rational posted, um, in the earliest of podcasts, that was like, I used it as an archive server for quite a few podcasts that I listened to. I offered like, hey, if you want to like back your stuff up here, I'll give you, you know, a couple gigs to back up with. And so there were archives of shows stored on that server under my desk that had two power supplies and a <laughs> hand crank. <laughs> Tech professionals. <laughs> yeah, right? Like this is, anyway, now I work on enterprise sites and I'm sure it's a little bit better than that. Probably. I don't think my code is, no. <laughs> Maybe not the code, but everything's being stored in a really important place, I'm sure. There's two hard drives now. Yeah. <laughs> and only one is hand crank based. <laughs> Amazon hand crank really, as a really service. <laughs> and they almost never need to be cranked. No. Just that's oh, what man. the cloud means. Maybe this is why I don't get to meet with clients, right? <laughs> <laughs> Because when you describe the process, they're like, there's a clamp? Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes or Google Play. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at, at @binaryjazz. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz. Thank you.